Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So today I'm gonna to show you how to work these 3D letter files to make a really fun um, Halloween decoration piece for your table. So I have the letters uh, B-O-O, -O, so I'm spelling out boo, which I only have two hands, so I can only show you these two at a time. Um, but, I, so here you go. This is the haunted house one with the lights. I don't have the lights on right now, but I love, I, I think that one's my favorite. And then here is the bloody one. So you can actually see everything right now. Let me make this a little bit smaller so you can kind of see. Um, that this is really it. So what you need to do is, uh, well, first off, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. <laughs> all right, then I'm gonna take you to, I get this question all the time. It's where do I get these files? Now, I have seen 3D letter files from many people. I've seen them on Cricut. I've seen them in uh, people who do it for Silhouette. Um, I've seen them everywhere on Etsy. My all-time favorite is Nilmara Quintella, and the reason is she, her letters are thick, so they are very stable. I'm going to show you in a second. Whoa, <laughs> that was a bad example. I was trying to balance it on one hand, but you can kind of see like how thick it is. So it's thick, it's well made, like well designed. So I love using her letters. I've tried some where it's super skinny, you need to anchor it. Um, I like these because like I said, they're full so I can decorate them. Like I have a full on haunted house and bats and a moon on this one. Sometimes you can't do that when your letters are too skinny. Okay, so let me show you where to get that. That is on Etsy and this is her page right here. This is the file. Um, this is the one with everything, the letters, the accents, the marks, uh, the numbers, that's what I would use because it's a one-time purchase and then you can use it, you know, a bazillion times to spell out a million different things. Um, those are capital letters. She does have lowercase letters. I have not worked with the lowercase letters at all. All right, let's go back to design space. So what happens is when you download them, then you need to upload each each letter is its own SVG file. So yes, you're gonna have to, I have not uploaded the whole set yet. I've been uploading when I need to use them. So I had the B and the O in here. When you go and upload them, the second thing I wanna talk to you about is these uh, dashes or cut, cut lines. I like the cut lines because it's like little cut marks. So when I go to fold them and piece them together, it folds so easily. So it's my favorite. It's called the cut file or cut, cut, yeah, uh, you know what? Let me go see. Hold on. Um, give me one second. Is it my desktop? Oh yeah, here we go. Um, Let me see. You have options. Uh, oh, here it is. It's called the cut file dash line. That's the one that you want. So, all right. I'm going to get out of that. You got to upload each letter individually. So I have my B and my O's. I'm going to move the decoration out of the way so you can kind of see what you have. When you do this, um, when you do the letters, they come in sized already at about six inches. So here's 6.2 inches, 6.2. So they all come in about 6.2 then, okay? So you don't need to do anything to resize them if you're good with six, about six inches. If you wanna make them bigger, they can only go so much bigger. I've gotten them to, I think, like a little bit over seven inches because the tabs, if you're using 12 by 12 uh, inch cardstock, these tabs, this one's pretty long, right? It's 11 and a half inches. So that's how, um, I think that's how she sized them. I mean, I haven't talked to her personally, but some letters can be bigger than others because they're not as long. They're not, you know, the individual tab is not as long as 11 and a half inches. If you end up using longer paper, like 12 by 24, then you can make them way, way bigger. But um, 
I don't know if it's worth the effort for you to resize them to get like another half an inch or an inch if that. It depends on your letters. Okay, so assuming that we're keeping them all the same, I'm not even duplicating the O. I'm just going to cut the O again when I go to, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I like to do each letter individually. And the reason is, so I brought them all in just kind of to, to make sure that they are the right size, but I ended up doing like a canvas for just the B, a canvas for just the one O, and then a canvas for the next O. And the reason is because these uh, little tabs, it's easier for me to put them together one letter at a time. Otherwise, the project gets to be too much, too many pieces to cut. The file gets really big. Um, and there's just too much to keep track of. And oh, this color, you know, this tab is this color. This one is this color. So I really do do each letter separately. So with that being said, let's do the B first, okay? So I'm gonna move this down just so that we only have in our view the letter B. So the B comes in, let me, um, it comes in like this, already set, right? What you need to do is, I've selected this one so that you can see what it looks like. Do you see the cut lines? <clears throat> It's separate from this one. What you need to do is you need to attach them so that when you go to make this file, these cut these cut lines are gonna cut exactly where the tabs are. So you definitely want that, right? Okay, so these are all done. You have your top B and your bottom B. So let me pull that out so you can see what that looks like. So there's nothing special about the front and the, and the back because all the details go on top of the letter. So I have blood, I have cobwebs, and I have a knife. That's all that is on this thing and a mask. So the mask is an SVG file. So I looked up killers, Halloween killers, I think. Halloween killers, SVG, and I got this little guy. So this is about 6.2 inches, right? So I wouldn't worry about how big, like, trying to figure out how big my mask should be, I would just put it against my letter B. And if it looks um, okay relative to the B, then the sizing is correct. So I wouldn't worry that like, oh, it needs to be four inches. It should just look good on this B because this B is sized accordingly, okay? Here is my knife. Um, my knife was also an SVG file that I got on Etsy. So you're gonna have to look for, the, for a different knife or, or one that's similar. So I want my B to kind of run across here. So I'm gonna make it a little bit larger. Okay, and then this mask is in front and then I got blood splatter, right? So I went into images and typed, I think I typed splatter. And there were some knives um, in design space as well. Um, okay, yeah, so I think I did this one right here. So on that one, I'm gonna add to canvas, and then I'm gonna delete the ones that look like paint splatter. Um, I'll show you the ones that I ended up using. So the 3D letters are a lot of fun because they already come, like the, the letters themselves, right? Like how to build them, the tabs that come with it that you need to fold up and glue down. Those are all done. So the only thing that's left is decorating the letters on top of that. So um, I, I like it a lot and they, they always look so good. Um, okay, so I ended up using this one and I think I used, I did, I used these top two ones. So I'm gonna ungroup it and let's look at the yellows. The yellows I don't need, so I'm just gonna click on the yellow one over here and delete it. The pink one I didn't like either. This blue one, I'm gonna click on contour because it comes attached. It comes with this one and this one, right? So I'm gonna contour and I'm gonna get rid of the big blob that I don't want. So I'm just gonna select on it. Oops, there's something more. Let's go to contour, it shouldn't be that big. There's something else on this screen. I think it's this one. 
Okay, yeah, so here's my little blood. And this one went down here, so I made it really small. And I had it running along these lines right here. So see, I had that one there. This one, I'm gonna go to contour and get rid of the two bottom splashes that I don't really care about. And this one I had up here along this B, and I did it about that big. And that's, look it. That's my B, right? Super easy. Okay, let me go find that knife for you. Um, it's not gonna be the exact knife, but you can go into images and type in knife. But this bat, this bat we used for the haunted house. So um, I'm just gonna click on this as well. I'm gonna insert, add to canvas because that's the bat we used. And oops, and let's go back to images. And we'll look for that bat, I mean, the knife. Okay, so knife. Oh, that's the one I uploaded. I'm like, there's the one. Uh, this one I uploaded. So let's see if there's another one that would work. There's that one. It doesn't look quite as good. There's this one. So you have lots of images that you can choose from, okay? So you just have to search for knife and then insert the one that you want. All right, so I'm gonna cancel out of that. So before I delete this B, so here's the bats. We'll look at the bats in a second. What is this little thing? Oh, I had two knives in there, okay. Um, you need to select on each one of these and attach, okay? So that the cut lines are cutting exactly on this piece here. So this one, you're gonna select this one and you see how it's showing as two separate things. We wanna attach it so that it's together. And then I think this is the only one that's left. Okay, I'm gonna attach. All right, so I'm actually gonna delete it so that it doesn't slow down our, um, our canvas. So this is the letter B, B is done. Let's look at the next one. Here is our O. Let's do the haunted house first, because, oh, what happened? Okay, here we go. So the O comes in, I'm gonna move this aside. This is the one for our shaker, so ignore this one for now, okay? I'm gonna put it down there. Okay, here's our O. And same thing here, you're gonna wanna attach everything, okay? So go and click attach for each, three, um, each one of the three tabs. Okay, so I looked up haunted house in images and I thought this one was cute, okay? So, and I had it like kind of off to the side like this um, and I added the bats. That was it, so that's this one right here. Oops, there's my camera. Okay, and I have lights, so let me turn on one of the lights so you can kind of see. Do you see it flashing? It's so cute. So um, there is a video that's coming to show you how to piece that together. But here is our file, okay? So again, the O and the tabs, they are already sized, right? So I want the haunted house to look good in comparison to this letter O. I don't have, and I'm not worried about how big it is in actual life. I just wanna make sure that it looks good on my O right here. And I also am, you may disagree with me, but um, I still wanna be able to see what letter it is behind it. So like we could have done this and made it really big, right? But I kinda of want it on the side because I want it to be obvious that it's the letter O. Okay, so let's, this looks good, right? 
So let's ungroup this thing. And what I did was see how they have different color window panes and for the door. I ended up deleting all of that and I used one volume sheet and I used volume because I wanted, I knew I was going to put lights in it and I wanted the lights to come through. So it, to me, volume paper is like tracing paper from back when we were, you know, kids in school. Um, so it's kind of like that light um, paper that's like a little frosted, but thinner so that light can shine through it. So I didn't need all these colors. I only wanted the green one because the green one. So if I got rid of the orange one, so I'm going to hit click on this one, hit shift and get rid of the gray and the purple. I'm going to delete all that. So see the whole thing is one sheet, okay? I didn't care for the base, so I just deleted the base. And then I'm good. My moon, okay. And then I ended up putting the, oh, let me get to it. Oh, there, I did move it, oops, hold on. The moon I ended up putting over here like this. I liked these two bats. So what I'm going to do with the bats, they came as one image, right, with two bats. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to separate the bats so that I can size it and also get an outline. So I'm going to click on contour and on this one I'm going to get rid of the big bat. So I'm left with just the little one, okay. So on this one I want to keep the big one, right. So I'm going to click on contour and I'm going to select on the small bat to get rid of it. So that's quickly using contour. All right, so this bat I ended up putting behind the letter. This bat I ended up putting like here. Both bats have an outline. So the way I did the offset is I just clicked on this, click on offset, and I like my offset really thin. So I always just type in 0 0.10 and then apply, because see how thin that is? It's actually not that thin in real life. It's still, you know, sizable. All right, um, and I do want it a different color. Let's see, here's my other bat. I'm gonna click on offset. It should uh, go back default to the last one that I used, so 0.10, I click on apply. Okay, and that's it. I would say for this one, because I was using the lights, the actual um, lights with the, um, the little tabbies to take out, I did, I did a duplicate of the haunted house to make it really stable. And that's our letter O. So that's the haunted house. And then this is just, you know, little cobwebs, uh, things from the Dollar Tree. Um, trying to think, and then, you know, you can sort the color out um, as you would like. For the tabs, I like to use, um, 80 to 110 pound cardstock and, and that's only because I don't want my letters to be flimsy, right? So if I have it like stable, um, then it's um, it stands and I don't have to worry about it. So I, I like to use thicker paper for the tabs. All right, the last O, oh, this one's tricky, a little tricky, trickier than the others because the others we were just, we're, we're putting a flat cover on it and then we're just decorating on top, right? So now I'm gonna get rid of all these little things and we're gonna do our last one. Our last one is a shaker. So with the shaker, we're using the same O. Sorry, let me get rid of all this. Okay. Let me show you what that shaker looks like. So, can you hear it? In person, you can actually see the sequence. It's a lot of fun. I mean, I think this is really, really pretty. Um, I like using the shakers for like um, birthdays when you do, you know, the age. Um, and I just think it looks really pretty. All right, so let's see, I'm gonna bring this back. These two little outlines, because if you think about it, okay, so this one's a little bit different. You have the back, right? This is the very back then you build your wall. This is actually going to be acetate paper. It's going to sit on top and you can see in through you can see through it and inside, right? But what happens when you can see through is all these tabs when you fold them up, you can see these little flaps. So these little guys 
will sit on top of the acetate paper. This was my purple glitter paper. So it hides all the glue and all the imperfections. Um, and then this little guy goes right here. Okay. So the way to create this is, well, first of all, you know, one layer is going to be your acetate layer and one is your bottom layer. And these are your tabs. And then you throw in your confetti and whatever pieces that you want to make the noise on the inside. So the only thing we need to create are these two little guys right here. So what you wanna do is you want to, let's make a duplicate copy so that we know we need these two guys, right? So I'm gonna move this up. On this one, what you wanna do is we wanna go get an offset, but instead of an offset, like an outline, we want an internal offset. We want it to be smaller, right? So we're gonna move this dial over to the left of this neutral bar, the left of zero. That means we're creating that offset. Do you see how it's getting thicker, like on the inside like that? Okay, I also, um, I think I did a rounded corner. It looks like I did, but I probably, if I was paying close attention, I probably would have wanted a more angular um, corner. So that is total preference, okay? So this looks about right, right? So I'm gonna apply, oops, I didn't apply it. Let's go to offset again. Good exercise, right? All right, let's move this over and let's see what that looks like. We need this to be thick because look at how thick these tabs are. We wanna be able to cover that up. So this looks about right to me. I'm gonna click apply. And what happens is you want to grab these two at this point and you want to slice. So when you slice, you're going to get this. This is the outer layer that goes on top and this is the one that goes right over the inside. And let me see if I did a good job. Let's see. Oh yeah, they're, they're the same. We eyeballed it and it looks the same. This is off-centered because it's, you know, they're just two separated pieces. So what you wanna do is, let's get rid of this. We don't need this and we don't need this. So on this one, because they're two pieces together, all you need to do is you need to duplicate it and we're gonna go to contour and get rid of the piece we don't need, right? Or you can keep them as is because it'll cut like this, duh. I take that back, we're totally good. This will cut and you'll have your two pieces that you can put on top. That was it, right? Super, super easy. And um, there, it's easy to put together. It's a really fun project um, with like, I feel like it's low maintenance, but it also gives you like high results. They look really good in person. They photo really well. And it's just really decorative and totally, you know, makes your house look great. So, all right, that is all I have for you. I hope that was easy. Let me know if you have any questions and let me know what else you wanna see. All right, bye guys.